marketing manipulation. We're fear-free dog trainers. Don't force your dog. Don't scare your dog into things. For me, if my mom looked at me a certain way, I was like, all right, my bad, right? So that type of fear is what keeps things alive. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we have a seven month old dog that was recently adopted, dealing with things that you guys are probably dealing with at home. We are getting into the garbage. We are very suspicious about the cat. We're pulling on the leash. We're trying to figure out, how, I, my dog is doing all these things, but I'm unsure on how to discipline my dog. They're not listening. I'm yelling at them. I'm doing things that maybe I found in books and I'm doing things that I think is right, but none of this is, is working. So we're gonna dive into the video and create a template on how to build a better relationship with the dog, the proper, the best way to really just get in and say, hey, look, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. I want you to be a dog, I want you to be a puppy, and I also want you to listen. So anyway, so we're gonna dive into this video, but if you haven't yet, do not forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We're gonna be doing videos like this every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. Anyway, let's get right into the video, guys. Yeah, um, well, he's a rescue dog, but Okay, we're... cool. So how old is Chester? seven months so because it's your first session what i like to do is create a hey pay attention to me it doesn't matter if they're young old or we have them for five years or five minutes if we don't create a, like a good engagement uh, process they basically become glorified roommates they love us they care about us they know that we're kind of a family but the engagement they don't take direction you know so that's what i want to start off with we're going to make sure that that slip is high and tight. Go ahead. Chester, heel. Pop. Go ahead. Heel. Now, one question I get often is, is it okay if his nose is down and he's sniffing? Yes. The answer is yes. Being a new dog, being a hound, nose is down, expected, fair, I'm okay with it. It's the leash pressure that I'm really focusing on. Making sure that he's not here or here, he's right here, good heel, buddy. And I'm using my, my leash here. Pop, pop, pop. There. Pop, pop, pop. Yes, good. Good heel, just like that. Do you, you see that? So lots of positive. Yes, buddy. Good heel. His tail's wagging. So there he's like, do I have to? So this is don't chase the cat, don't jump, don't lunge. It's a template. Do I have to do what you want me to do? This is a good opportunity. He goes, no, 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 no. there's something good here. It's like empathy, I get it, you're a hound. But at the same time, we're training. Come on, come on bud, come on. Yes, good boy, come on. Chester, come on, come on bud. Come on, let's try it again, come on bud. Come on, Chester. Yes, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Come on, 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 come in his case, he's like, because that's a hardwood compared to the, the, the epoxy. I'm gonna switch to a prong really quick. I could pick him up and carry him. That doesn't really help, right? He has all the leverage in the world. So we're just gonna use a Herm Springer really quick and I'm gonna switch back over to his, his slip, but I wanna see if this works because when he plants like this, he has all the leverage. And so that's a decision he's made to say, I'm not doing it. I either can drag him, I can spend two or three days like, oh, come on, but we don't have two or three days. So I wanna see if I'm able to just eliminate some of his leverage by his dead weight. So it's the same thing as the slip, the same mechanics. It's just safer for him to use. So there's not as much pressure on his neck where it's pulling him. Come on, bud. See, good boy. Come on, yes, good boy. Well done! Yes, good boy! Good man. You see the difference? It's nice, right? Dramatic difference. When I'm doing this, I don't want to force the dog to do anything. I don't want to be naive to think, is this dog taking advantage of me right now? Chester, come. Yes! Good man! Good man. Threshold, sit. Yes, pay him. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, break. 
Call him back over. Chester, come. Oh, you're so brave. Sit. Yes. Can we expedite the process with just using a tool humanely, effectively, efficiently, and sustain sustainable? I don't want to like, this isn't like a cheap fix. It's just, hey, let's just get over this now. And he's like, okay, sure. If I can do that, I'm going to do it. And we did. The other template is, is just making sure that you have leash pressure and you have discipline with him. So making sure you're able to give him some sort of punishment if he does, if he does stuff you don't like. There's two options, right? We say, okay, I have a dog that I'm responsible for that is, is I have adopted, I've bought and I've rescued, I've saved, whatever. It's our responsibility to sculpt this dog's life. We have to teach this dog right from wrong. And so some people will say, if a dog is getting into the garbage, uh, make a really loud clap noise to deter him away, right? It's aversive, it's I don't like this, I'm getting out of there. It's, it's, it's okay, it's discouraging the behavior. For me, it's just, I want it to be about me. Hey, leave it, right? And then it's a template. So when I say leave it, it's trash can, it's trash can at your friend's house, the neighbor's house, it's what, anything, like literally anything. So I don't want something, shape can, noise can, noise maker, to be the distinguishing factor between my dog listening to me and not, because they don't like that. I want it to come from me. My enforcer, will depend on the dog. It'll depend on the situation. So some people I work with are not professional dog handlers and they can't handle a dog. So they need tools. They need certain things to help them. So I just, I just, for me, it's about what, what makes sense. There's so many different ways and people are like, this is what you gotta do. This is how you have to do it. And it's like, ah, I don't know if that really makes sense to me. It's like, hey, let's just do what makes sense. So for me, we set up certain scenarios and we create a template, okay? So he's gonna be into something that he doesn't like. I want my voice to ultimately tell him no, but I also want that to be enforced by something. So go to your room, your kid flips you off. They say, absolutely not, I'm not doing it. You take away their iPhone. So the next day you say, go to your room. They're like, yes, ma'am, I'm out, peace, right? They're, on, they're gone. Because you were able to give them some sort of consequence, right? So if we switch that and we use maybe purely positive reinforcement training where we don't ever say no to the dog and we ignore the behavior, how long is that going to take you before the dog eats chicken bones and, and blah, blah, blah. And assertiveness, on time, hey, that's not okay. If you don't listen, there's, hey, pay attention type thing, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five different dogs in the room. This, this girl here, she's a puppy. The, He's younger, he's younger, and the other two shepherds, they're all chilling. And we've created this work and play environment through leadership, guidance, and all that stuff. Hey, this is the cat, the trash, the neighbor, whatever. This is that, you're gonna be interested into this. It's gonna go in here. He's gonna go, mmm, that looks good. I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna let him have it. Good, okay, totally fine. Now. We're gonna do this again. Chester, sit. Good. Leave it. Leave it. So I corrected him, right? He went in. First thing I did, verbal. Leave it. No, no. And he goes, no, but that's, and I went, 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 and he's like, Ugh. right? So now, he knows the food's in there. He's a hound. He can smell this tomorrow. Leave it. Correction. Sit. Good. So impulse control is, hey buddy, I know you want this and I let you have it. And I may let you have this one, but it's not on your terms, it's on mine. It's our jobs because we care to provide structure, guidance, leadership. Not because we're being alpha or whatever. We're being clear, we care. He's pretty decent about his food, we do it with treats, but he will not, I mean, he'll never do that if, you, if he runs and finds the cat food. Right. So, and he gets there before you do and you say, leave it. Yep, listen. that's a great point. One of the biggest differences between the dog actually conceptualizing and capture and respecting the leave it command is, in my opinion, in my experience, because my opinion and my experience are two different things, my opinion is what I think, my experience is, is how, how many times I've done it and what works and what doesn't, because I've tried so many different ways of working with, I've been doing it for 13 years every single day and, I've, and, and I'll and i do a lots of this way and lots of that way, I switch it up. I don't wanna be a one man show where I'm like, this is the only tool, this is the only way. To me, that doesn't make any sense because I wanna help as many dogs as I can, not just one size fits all, okay? So the biggest difference is, is the correction, the punishment. So what are we doing to enforce it? What's the enforcement, right? So the punishment is what makes sense. So we go to the bank, we rob it, we leave, they go, hey, uh, that was rude. You go, oh, sorry, right? 
counting all your money. The next day you do it again. So really, the punishment is how this world goes around. Put this down, we could do negative punishment, which would take it away. So we put it down, leave it, that's punishment. So even people who think that they train purely positive and never use punishment and they took the food away, it's punishment, it's negative. You're taking that away, that's punishment for the dog. So what I like to do is use positive punishment. I'll leave the food down and I'll add something to the mix that's punishing to him. And I say, no, 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 it's a math equation. So we're gonna put this down. Chester, leave it. Good. Dog psychology. This is huge because there's a lot of people who think dogs don't have the ability to remember punishment, to understand and to capture. They don't understand when they be punished. They just think you're cool. He is literally like, I'm not in trouble. I'm out. Peace. I can't handle this. I'm gone. You let me know when I can have it. I'll come back. So he fully understands. When I'm walking around and he knows that I can enforce the leave it where he's like, I don't want to get in trouble. He's like, yes, sir. And then this transfers to your whole life and it becomes this very valuable, respectful, contrasting, like very, it's very balanced. Just like with kids, marketing manipulation out there too. And unfortunately dog owners and dogs are at the risk and the short end of the stick when it comes to this marketing manipulation because they say, we're fear-free dog trainers. Don't force your dog, don't scare your dog into things. For me, if my mom looked at me a certain way, I was like, all right, my bad, right? So that type of fear is what keeps things alive. I do want a little bit of fear because when I say leave it, it's not because I'm trying to be a big shot. Respect is what saves lives. Leave it. I want that fear. I want that fear. That fear I love, yes right? Because it's going to save his life. I want him to go, no, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm fearing, fearing getting in trouble. So I take it very seriously. Same thing with recall. If I say come, not because I want you and I love you and I want to cuddle you. It's because I don't want you to get hit by something. Same exact thing with leave it. It means so much to me that when I say leave it, it's for their safety and I'm going to enforce it if they, di if they, if they don't comply. And by that, it's just popping the collar with the Herm Springer. So is it, is it a matter of Good man. You know, doing training exercises like this for quite a while with the collar and then um, taking the collar off and trying uh, to reinforce it and seeing how he does without yes. it. Yep. And then continuing to just practice that, yep. but now you don't need the collar? Correct. So okay. let's so let's break it down to like an experiment here, okay? So we'll take enforcer off because we've reinforced it. Right? Mm -hmm. See you later. Take slip off, and then we'll put the flat collar on. So in theory, to, to many people, we could never do this because the dog is only listening because of that. Well, let's see. Leave it. Sit, stay. Seven month old puppy, hound, we taught and forced, ah! So he knew, because I've done that before, he's got consequence. So to me, the question is, when you're training your dog, and it doesn't matter what you're training them for, do you want your dog to respond to Let's just hope that this works. Or do we want them to have some sort of click in their brain that goes, last time I got in trouble for that and I didn't like it. No brainer for me. I train for reality. You're gonna go home, you're gonna live with this dog, with your family, and he's gonna get in this stuff because he's a puppy and you just got him and you love him and you don't want anything to ever happen. Now we have the ability to, to enforce it and say, hey, knock it off. And he's like, got it. So. Yeah. Because we don't want him, um, we don't want him trying to steal food or um, just being a menace. Right. And um, and it's fine, but like I, I just want to have the confidence that he will listen. Yeah. When we say no, you can't have this, but you can have this when we say you can have it. I feel like now we have a, we have a good good grasp. Yeah.
All right, you guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't yet, do not forget, kick that like button, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to cop yourself some No Bad Dog merch. Link in the description below. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace out.